I'm here today, and I have to tell you something. I was really afraid to do this. Um, I even had to look at kitty cat photos to calm myself down. Um, <laughs> but I asked myself, what is a TED Talk? Why am I even doing one if I'm afraid? Well, a TED Talk's about ste stepping into the city garden, the arena, this auditorium with Plato, Socrates, Hippotia, to talk shop. And that's what I'm asked to do here today with you. But even though I'm afraid, I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad, I'm glad to tell you why you should join a hackathon and what it means for you to be innovative. So it is a hackathon. When you think of a hackathon, you might think of events where you might see techies or people hunched over their computers typing away or that you have to write in a language called HTML, C++, Python, Ruby. It sounds complicated. Or you might think of who might go to a hackathon. You might say a loner or a gamer or a computer geek. But I like to think of it as more than that, okay? And let me reveal something else about me. I'm none of those characteristics, except, of course, geek, proud geek, okay? But I don't program. I don't know C++, though I did take a course at Ladies Learning Code. I'm not a loner, I'm not a gamer, but yet I'm into hacking, and I'm into helping other people hack. So what or who is a hacker? Well, according to Stephen Levy, who wrote the book Hackers, Heroes of the Computer Revolution, and also a prominent hacker himself, he describes hackers as those people that like the idea of messing around, tinkering, and making things. Hackers are part of the do-it-yourself or maker culture. You just have to go to Pinterest to find an assortment of hacks. Hacks for life, hacks for IKEA furniture, or in your case, when you go to university and college, check out the college hacks. What this shows you is that anybody can be a hacker. A hacker is somebody who sees a problem, who has an obstacle that they're trying to overcome, who likes to take apart things, but then put them back together in a whole new way. A hacker is somebody that I like to think of as the idea person, the business-minded, the artist, the historian, the writer, the cyclist, the driver, the sports player, a student, a researcher, basically anyone, a citizen, you. And just like the arena of conversation that I'm here part of today, and even how you might think of as libraries, I want you to remember that a hackathon is a space of sharing ideas, being creative, and tapping into your skills to help yourself or to help others achieve a shared vision, goal, or a product. So hackathons, or the type of events that I organize, are marathon events that bring together computer programmers with other researchers or students or other people to build websites, apps, widgets, or other software projects. These hackathons, when I say marathon events, I mean events that actually will last 24 hours straight, 48 hours straight, with little or no sleep and lots of coffee. Lots and lots of coffee, and if you're lucky, there's even Red Bull there. So these hackathons, we're starting to see them, we usually see them in computer science and engineering schools, which can make them a bit exclusive to those students. But we're also starting to see them pop into cities. There is a recent one on April's full day in Toronto called the Decongestion Hackathon that was dealing with downtown traffic congestion. We're also starting to see hackers in the library, but not when I started at York University as an engineering librarian in 2012. So imagine me sitting at the reference desk, always being asked if I'm a student. Even today I was asked if I was a student. So trying to pave my way for, away from myself as a librarian trying to find a way to outreach to students and to promote the library services and skills. I had a problem. I needed to outreach to students. I needed to meet with the professors that I was supposed to be working with and find a way to connect back to the library services. So, like a sensible librarian, I read. I went to the public library and I took out Wired magazine. And what I read and what I found out was an article that would spark an idea and also mobilize students to think of themselves as innovators. The article is called The 48-Hour Startup. It's in the March 2012 issue. And what I read was what is a hackathon and how it can spur creativity. And when I read that, I knew it was something I wanted to organize in my library at my ac academic institution. Then I had to figure out, okay, how was I going to organize it? What are the logistics? So that was my next problem. And I went to look out to see if there was any examples of libraries and hackathons. I couldn't find any. So I had to think my, to myself, why libraries and hackathons? Would I just be riding on the bandwagon of all the hackathons that were out there? 
How could I set the library apart to give reasons of why hackathons in libraries? So of course, this required even more research. I had to go out and read some articles. I had to meet with researchers at the iSchool at University of Toronto, where I, go to, where I went to school. I also talked to my colleagues who have actually been to hackathons. And from all the information that I gathered, I organized my first hackathon in 2013, themed Open York Data. The feedback from students was amazing. They really liked the collaborative feeling. They liked the idea of having mentors. They wanted to know when was the next one. And they were starting to get hackathon mania. And frankly, so was I. So we decided to make it an annual event at York. So the next hackathon that I organized was Culture and Technology in a Mobile World, followed by Hacking for a Better World. And most recently, my colleagues organized Making a Difference with Data Hackathon. This year, they had 75 participants, compared to 25 in the first year that I organized. They have a more diverse set of mentors, and they have breakout tutorials to help students with their technical and critical skills around topics such as the business model generation, or even um, social entrepreneurship. And I should mention that the hackathon that I organized at York University was not competitive. There wasn't a first prize, there wasn't a second prize, there wasn't a third prize, and there was no huge pot of money at the end of the rainbow. And the reason people keep coming back to this hackathon, people were still coming back. And that, that's because they liked the idea of having mentors and working with others. There were still judges and mentors to help them critically evaluate their outcomes. And there were actually, we invited venture capitalists to help to see if, if there are any projects to potentially work with. These students really like the idea of collaboratively, sh collaboratively sharing their ideas with others, and that's why, what drove them and their incentive to continue coming back to these hackathons. So at Centennial College, where I currently work, I worked with the Applied Research and Innovation Center to organize a student hackathon for an entrepreneurship conference. The Tech Meets Main Street Wearable Hackathon was about bringing together students to hack about wearable technology for society. They had to think of concepts and ideas, they had to think of design issues, and they also had to think of business aspects. And if they had it, they also had to bring in their hard and soft engineering skills. So with the Uncompetitive Library Hackathon, it really builds upon the ideas of collaborative sharing, knowledge sharing in an open space where people can discuss in, a, with, in scholarly conversations with their researchers and peers. So my first reason for why you should join a hackathon is that hackathon means solving problems. Well, what type of problems? Well, basically any problem that you might care about. For example, another amazing hackathon are the ones organized by Random Hacks of Kindness. This is an organization that uh, hacks about social issues. So they might work with a not-for-profit organization like Amnesty International to help them hack about an electronic petition form or they might work with Oxfam to build a user-generated debate forum. Or they even might hack up for architectural solutions for people that are deaf. But what this shows you is that hacking is for everyone. Hacking requires people from all walks of life. So whether you're an architect, work for a not-for-profit organization, or a student, or understand the needs of accessibility or disability needs, or a person that just likes to solve a problem so to make a positive societal impact. If you like to solve problems or help other people solve problems, then you're welcome to join a hackathon. And no computer programming skills are required to join a hackathon. So when you think of libraries, you're probably thinking books. But there's way more happening behind those open doors. There's a wealth of information and services that you can access or anybody in the community can access at the library. And if you didn't know this already, for free. So whether you need updating on your word processing skills, or maybe you need help fixing your bike, or you're part of a book club in the library, the library is meant to be a neighborhood hub. In this sense, hackathons, specifically in libraries, means social inclusion. And the fundamental cornerstone of libraries is that it promotes dialogue, that they help to encourage and promote engaged citizenship. And the idea is that anybody, regardless of your race or gender, socioeconomic background, you can go to the library to be informed about issues around the government or civic public policy or about emerging technologies. 
what we're seeing now is that libraries are about knowledge sharing, collaborativeness, and critical thinking. And that's how we want to build libraries upon those sentiments. So it is in this sentiment that hacking and making in libraries are happening, and in my perspective, are why we should be talking about hacking and making in libraries. So one example of social inclusion is this app that was developed at York University's hackathon, I'm at York. So at York, there were, at this hackathon, there were three different groups working on a similar topic. They were trying to build an app to help students find their way around campus. I don't know if you've been to York University, it's one of the largest campuses in Canada. It's huge. It almost seems like a maze for a first year student. And they actually have an underground pathway that I consider a maze. I've never been down there. And so what happened was, because there were three different groups working on this, and it's a non-competitive hackathon, the groups end up sharing IDs with each other. Anytime they had a breakthrough in their coding, they would share with the other group so they could help improve each other's projects. So even though there was no incentive or prize at the end, these students were driven by the fact that they can help make somebody else's life easier. And they liked the idea of sharing their resources so to make themselves and their projects better. They were in, it was in an open space and a safe space. And this is exactly the type of research environment that the library promotes, open access. Open access is a movement to make all research available freely anywhere to everyone. So that way, people like you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars to read a research article. And the idea is, if you share your research, people can learn and then help advance research in a field. So when you think about it, universities and colleges, the research that's happening there, it's usually publicly funded, but yet the public has to pay to access that, those articles and the research that's coming out of it. In this sense, access to information is a human right. And similarly, the library Hackfest, because it's non-competitive, it helps, it helps to promote open collaboration and sharing of resources so that anybody can bring their experience and expertise to make somebody else's idea better. And even the pictures that you see up on the screen and even the te presentation template that I'm using, they're open. They have a Creative Commons license, which means that I could use somebody else's photography to make my presentation better. And it is in this sentiment that library and hackathons are, are non-competitive and about collaboration. This leads me to my next point, why you should join a hackathon and why hackathons should be in libraries. Hackathon means critical making. Critical making is about civic engagement, social inclusion, creativity, and engagement, which researcher Matt Ratto at the iSchool at University of Toronto calls critical making. Critical making is about bringing together the theoretical sides of critical thinking with the practical sides of actually physically making something. Critical making is reflective, it's technical, and helps to analyze your outcomes and designs, your problems and constraints, and then connecting it back to theoretical issues such as surveillance, privacy, equity, or justice. One app that was developed um, at Hacking for a Better World Hackathon was Timeify. And this example really brings together the three different concepts, how hackathons solve problems, how it's about social inclusion, and critical making. This app is based off the York University ads called This Is My Time. You might have seen them around buses or subway platforms, but the idea is that there's a student that shows their dreams and aspiration. The person who came up with this app, Timeify, felt that the ad was exclusive. It was only meant for those certain students that were selected. He wanted to change that. He wanted every student to be able to create their own This Is My Time so they can, they can feel part of the York University culture. It's in this sentiment that this app was really about equitable access, social inclusion, and then connecting it back to a broader social and cultural need at York University. This student got the real life experience at the hackathon. So when you go out to university college, you wanna make sure that you can apply what you learn in class, so the critical thinking parts, to, to the real life scenarios, the making and doing side of things. And that's what we call experiential education. And this is one of the reasons why library hackathons should happen. They're about knowledge sharing and collaboration. And in my, in my perspective, should never be about competition. 
Library hackathons help to improve people's literacy around innovation, and it helps to build upon the foundational bearings and the history of the library's connection to improve broader social and cultural issues. So I want you to take this moment and think about an issue that you have. Maybe it's with an app that you have on your phone that you think could be better. Or maybe it's something at school. Is there a problem at school that needs fixing that can be done more efficiently? I want you to take that and write that down. Now take that idea and join a hackathon. Or better yet, why don't you organize a hackathon for this school? Hack out your problems with your friends, students, teachers, and don't forget the coffee, because you'll need it. And even though I don't organize a York Hackathon anymore, my question is, where am I going to take my creativity next? If I'm going to be critically thinking, I'm going to be making sure that I'm reading, watching, and listening. So if you take one thing away from this talk, it's that innovation is for everyone. And yes, join a hackathon. So I leave you with one last question. What is your creativity? Thank you.